All right. <laughs> sip, sip. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. We are wine drunk. <laughs> wine drunk on a Saturday because we're quarantined. No, just <laughs> um, <laughs> Stay safe out there. All right. So, welcome to Plots with a Twist where we discuss books amongst other things and today we're going to get into three books that did meet the hype and three books that did not meet the hype yeah that were right so let's yeah. get into it so our list is kind of random yeah um i mean if you want something a little more specific as far as time range year mm -hmm. um genre let us know but for now we just kind of just randomly pick books that we felt that were we read and just, right that yeah. we read and that we felt were either hyped well overall they were all hyped that mm -hmm. we felt were hyped our definition of hype that we saw everywhere mm -hmm. that you know was on People multiple were book lists were good yeah mm -hmm. Or maybe it's even been made a movie, but <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, we kind of just stuck to the books we read out of our definition, mm -hmm. and then put it into the two categories. So right. if it's a little bit everywhere, it's okay. Yeah, y'all like it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to do the not hot the books that did not meet the hype, yes, and Asia's going to do the books that <laughs> did meet the hype. So, do you want to go first? Should we start with the positive or the negative? Let's get the negative out the way, I guess. Okay. So, I'm doing negative. Yeah, you're doing negative. I forgot. All right. So, <laughs> so one book that I feel like did not meet the hype was The Girl on the Train by mm -hmm. Paula Hawkins. So, I believe that was her first novel, was it? So, we'll give her a little leeway. We'll give her a little leeway uh -huh. just because of that. But other than that... Um, so if you haven't read it or seen the movie or anything, so, mm -hmm. everybody described the girl on the train as like the next gone girl. Mm -hmm. so, so the girl on the train follows a woman who's basically, um, I don't want to say she's a recluse, but she's kind of a stay at home, um, doesn't do much with her day, mm -hmm. drinks alcohol all the time the and dry, rides the train to destinations Girl, the, the privilege she got right. something like that on her hands right <laughs> so she always passes this house in particular and there's this couple that lives there that she kind of obsesses over and she created her own little story in her mind as to what they do who they are and how they get about their day um so it goes into something happens where the wife of the couple is murdered and basically she's she inserts herself into this investigation and basically states that she knows these people there's no way the husband could have did it and the wife was having this affair and all this other stuff that basically leads to nothing <laughs> right so it go it does go into why she's obsessed with this particular path on the train and the issues that she has that led to why she is the way she is but other than that this story would have been nothing nothing mm -hmm. at all if she just minded her business mm -hmm. because ultimately it had nothing to do with her mm -hmm. you didn't know these people why are you calling the police <laughs> why are you acting like you're part of their lives mm -hmm. you don't know them you crazy you roll <laughs> by their house on the train by choice yeah so like she even had a point where she went to go meet the husband and all uh, uh, she was crazy uh, she was a nut who are you mm -hmm. but ultimately i just felt like it was just very much lackluster it was very underwhelming the even the plot twist that happened it was just not it was just, it's just not enough mm -hmm. so i just feel like it was an overhyped book that just didn't meet the hype okay mm -hmm. Let's get to the positive. No, oh. go. We're alternate. Okay, so a book that met the hype that we enjoyed very much and felt like, you know, everybody was talking about it and saying it was good and we read it and we felt the same way was To All the Boys I've Loved Before by 
Jenny Han. Jenny Han. I knew, it Han. <laughs> I knew it was Han. I wasn't sure what the first name was. So, to all the buzz I loved before, which I think is now like a movie um, series on um, Netflix, mm -hmm. was about a girl who's going through her adolescence and falls in, like, she writes letters to the boys that she um, has fallen in love with. And it's like that young teenage love and kind of like going through school and figuring out whether you want to stay with your boyfriend or why you go to college and all these things. So, um, we just both thoroughly enjoyed the book because it was very much realistic very much what you go through like when you're like you know got that young puppy love going on um and then and the way it's told it kind of gives you some insight into the main character like her her mom is deceased so she's being her and her sisters yeah they're being raised by a single dad and just like kind of going through that and like you know like not wanting to talk to your dad about certain things because he's your dad like you don't want no one on your business yeah. so right so um yeah we both enjoyed that book and like like um we said like this book was seen on pinterest list we saw it everywhere and obviously it was turned into a movie so it was very popular and we read it and very like we enjoyed it a lot um and thought it was i haven't seen the book the movie have you seen the i movie? saw the first one i haven't yeah. watched the second one yet but mm -hmm. yeah i didn't think i would like it just because i felt like it was very very young adult yeah but the it was book, very right? cute it was cute it was very much cute and it, it wasn't like super deep to where you know but because it's a young adult novel but it was very cute and it just gave you all the feels like oh okay i remember that when you was going through stuff and liking boys and just having miscommunication and be like well i don't like him i like this one now but now this one coming back is very much giving you that type of energy so yeah that one was worth the hype so if you haven't read it read it which i'm sure you guys most of you have all right another one yeah. that we felt like wasn't worth the hype was the silent patient yeah so i don't want to go too much into it because we, we have, have a book review. full yes. review about our thoughts mm -hmm. um so check the links below mm -hmm. but ultimately the silent patient was one that we saw everywhere mm -hmm. it won one of the goodreads awards i'm not a hundred percent sure of what category it won but mm -hmm. it won like a choice award mm -hmm. and um yeah it was just one of those ones that you just thought you was getting something mm -hmm. that you didn't get you know yeah. and it's like what i purchased versus what i got yeah and it's like and i will say we read a lot of like thriller suspense so being that we had a lot to compare it to and it just didn't live up to that like it just didn't <laughs> yeah just to kind of quickly get into it so it focuses on a psychotherapist that treats a woman that is notorious for killing her husband she's an artist and she's at this psychiatric facility um, the woman herself is the silent patient because she doesn't speak yeah. another word after the events of her husband's murder so it does go into both of their backstories and it does go in get to a point where you understand what is actually what actually happened so it just basically gets to a point where you just understand where it's trying to go and it's like hey guess what this what i was working up to mm -hmm. and it's like and it took so long to work up to that <laughs> oh my god it was yeah. like okay okay we get into it we get into it Mm -hmm. oh. So okay. it's just kind of one of those that kind of dragged and kind of caused a lot of anxiety as you was reading for no reason. Yeah. And the we discussed that the um plot twist and the ending was just kind of underwhelming for mm -hmm. us. But overall, I mean, it was still a if you did want to check it out, it was something that a lot of people enjoyed. But overall, if you're just looking for a super full bodied, <laughs> like a full body wine. Mm -hmm that's not the one yeah mm -mm. so silent patient i would say it did not meet the hype for us okay so a book that did meet the hype that was also turned into a television series a limited television series on hbo hbo mm -hmm. Showtime, was sharp objects by gillian flynn gillian flynn the author of famed gone girl um so this book is about a woman who is a kind of like a I don't want to say washed up, but she's like a mediocre reporter who um, is sent back to her hometown hometown to investigate a um, murder. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe it was a little while since we read it. Guys, so bear with me. But um, she's sent back to her hometown to investigate a murder and she goes back and lives with her mom and like her sister, who's just like weird little girl um and her mom is weird too and she's kind of i don't want to say she's not estranged but she's not like super close with them and basically it just goes through a series of events of her investigating this uh murder and like it's kind of hitting close to home close to her personal home 
hint, hint. Um, <laughs> so it, it just goes through those motions. And um, Gillian Flynn, she's really good at building up suspense and um, kind of, I don't know, like just building up the story. And I wouldn't say it's, it's not a mystery, but it's kind of like... Well, well, it kind of is it, a yeah, mystery. It's a mystery because you're kind of trying to figure out who's committing these murders because then mm -hmm. it starts to be more than one. Um, and the girl's trying to investigate, but while dealing with her own problems with kind of like isolation. And uh, I want to say she's a little bit of an alcoholic, right? Yeah, she's, she's a little alcoholic. bit. She has some trauma there. Yeah, so yeah. her going back to her hometown is kind of like a big deal for her. But she kind of wants to prove to her like newspaper that she can like cover this story or whatever. Um, the book was real. It was really good. Um, we very much enjoyed it because, like I said a million times before, like we love thriller, suspense, mystery type of type of deals. Um, and if you enjoyed Gone Girl, I wouldn't say it was as um, as tense or intricate yeah, as um, Gone Girl, but it still had that air of kind of mystery and suspense that you kind of look for if you mm -hmm. read Gillian Flynn before. So and that's, that's her first felt, one, right? I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was her first. It was her first book. So. Um, and you could tell, like, once she got to Gone Girl, she was feeling herself. She was in her mode. So, she was like, um, but even with her debut, like, it was like a really good, suspenseful mm -hmm. book. So, yeah, that one we definitely felt like lived up to the hype. It was everything we needed and more. So, yeah. All right. So, the last one that we wanted, or okay, <laughs> I'll preface it by saying we had mixed feelings on it. Yes, we had. But mixed ultimately, feelings. it was an overly hyped book mm -hmm. that it was. just didn't quite deliver how it was hyped up to be. I will agree. I will agree. And that was Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. Mm -hmm. So we've never really fully discussed Queenie on this channel, but mm -hmm. we have kind of put some little breadcrumbs here. So Queenie was about a kind of young black woman living in the UK, navigating the world after a breakup. Ba after a breakup. Mm -hmm. So she's dating and she's trying to amplify herself at work she's trying to do all these things to get her life together but her life is pretty much in shambles and it's kind of getting to a point where she um just needs help mm -hmm. and so it touches on the conversation of race it touches on the conversation of mental health um because queenie herself is a black woman that dates exclusively white men and it um just breaks down to a point where it's just about you know just all overall human issues mm -hmm. so ultimately our main problem at least my main problem with queenie was that basically it scratched at the surface of some of these issues but it did it never resolved them in a way that would that made sense mm -hmm. so even if you talked about you know it brought up issues so out and i've made the comparison before of such a fun age mm -hmm. and i feel like such a fun age it's debatable whether it successfully handled some of those issues, but I feel like because it was a little bit more stripped down, it kind of was more successful than Queenie because Queenie kind of brought up everything. It brought up the, the interracial dating. It brought up a black girl having mostly white friends. Mm -hmm. It brought up, she even talked about Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. It talked about mental health. Like it was a lot to take in. And so you're like, okay, what's the resolution? What's the resolve? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, eh. It just, it barely scratched the surface of right. getting to those issues and why, and why specifically mm -hmm. why Queenie kind of felt like she had to do certain things right in her life. I will say it was enjoyable because Queenie was a likable character. The way the author wrote her mm -hmm. was very humorous and very lovable. So you did feel for Queenie, but ultimately even reading some of the author's short stories, it's kind of like she's over ambitious when, with her writing and hopefully with her coming works, if she does continue writing um, novels and books, it will smooth out where she actually has, you know, a... We feel like she fell right. short with Queenie. Right. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I really feel like she fell short with Queenie. Um, I really feel like just basically she just didn't accomplish what she set out to. Um, it wasn't even a matter of bringing up conversations because ultimately her excuse for these issues that queenie was facing was just lackluster it was just it wasn't enough it was like it wasn't okay, enough yeah it didn't like, go deep enough but the issues that queenie had which were like deep like rooted issues it didn't like really go deep into to understand like okay girl like that's it like right what, what is, else is this there? is your reason yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly uh, so yeah just queenie it was every seen everywhere 
for us at least. Yeah, it was. And yeah, it and just it still is. Yeah, it still is. People are still reading it. And like I said, it's still entertaining. I mm -hmm. will give it that. But it's just one that didn't meet up to the hype for us. Okay, so last one that did meet up to the hype Positive. and that we did um, really, really enjoy was Where the Crawl Dad Sings. And um, if you guys follow our channel, which you should be, um, we have a whole in-depth review of this book because we really did both enjoy this book. I think we both gave it four stars, five stars, four stars. Four, four and a half. Four and a half, yeah. So, um, Where the Crawl Dad Sings just basically follows this woman who she... She basically is like left alone to fend for herself on a marsh and she kind of like falls in love and it goes through her life. Um, she has this whole trial. Of, it kind of follows the story of a man who is killed and like that she's involved with and it just follows her and how she kind of comes over these things and kind of like basically like still lives a, a life worth living even though she's kind of abandoned from like a young age to like fend for herself. Um, and we like we said like this book was everywhere with the crawl that sings every time I would go into a library and like pick up another uh, I believe I was picking up the book and a lady was like, oh, you should read this like it's a really good book So mm -hmm. it was hype everywhere in like every sphere every yeah where so um, we read the book um, And like I said, if you haven't like read it check out our review It's down below um, It will be linked down below um, but we really enjoyed it and felt like it definitely for the most part lived up to the hype from the writing to um how the story was told and, and the character development with all the different um store uh all the different characters in the story we just really really enjoyed it i think so far well that was last year i was gonna say this year so far last year that was uh, one of my favorite books from last year that mm -hmm. i read because it was just it was just that good so yeah and it was a shocker too because yeah. i didn't i didn't think i would get what i got out of it yeah and what i got out of it was great it was a good story it was just it did have a slow start mm -hmm. um, it did it did yeah but it picked up but it picked oh, up. yeah it was just a very good read so yeah. i definitely think it left it, it, it lived i think it lived up to the hype <laughs> to as the well hype. <laughs> it definitely did so let us know if you guys agree or disagree with any of our picks for as like, far as like living up and not living up to the hype. Um, if you guys have any that you felt like were hyped up and didn't to the hype, let us know down below so we can probably possibly check those out. Um, yeah. Like, comment, <laughs> subscribe. All right. And we Do will it. see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.